Okay, just to follow up on the last video with the AXN and the RL R Mile C radio gear, some people suggested to me that perhaps the camera was a bit noisy. The camera on my FPV backpack or some of the other gear that's hooked up on here. So I've got the spectrum analyzer set up here. Hopefully you can see that. Now there is a little bit of noise around here on 433. Let's just see what that actually, what frequency that, that little noise peak actually is. Where are we? Whoops, no, I'm going the wrong way. I want to go 430, there we go. I need to go with my marker, which is because I'm looking from a funny angle. Here we go, let's move the marker along. There is a spike here at 429. So, yeah, and there's another one at 430, exactly. But the RMLC gear hops around past that 433, I think we were at. So they shouldn't be too much of an issue. Well, they, they could be. But let's turn on the FPV backpack, the video system, and see whether it really screws up the noise. Now, I've got the sensitivity wound right up here. If I look at my um, reference level, um, where are we? The top level, it's minus 60 decibel at the top here, so it's 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110 decibels. There's a noise for it, 100, minus 110 decibels for this unit. So let's plug in the FPV backpack and see what it does. Okay, well you notice that the noise floor has increased slightly, but only ever so slightly. And my um, spectrum analyzer antenna is as close to the backpack as the antennas for the receiver are here. So, yeah, there's nothing really going on there. I wouldn't expect that to cause a major issue with reception. I'll just unplug it and we'll see what happens to the noise floor. See, it's unplugged now. Unplug, not much. Plug it in. Well, the battery's going flat on the spectrum analyzer, but there you go. So there's not a lot of noise produced by this, so it's not the installation. Just turn that off before it makes too much noise. So really, it's not the installation that's causing the problem. I'll show you a bit more inside what we've done with the install. Take the little thing off. Lift the AXN hatch. As you can see, I've got the RMLC receiver here, sitting on top of the battery. And the only other thing is the ESC down here, but that's a, a linear ESC, a linear beck in there, so that's not going to cause any noise. So the antennas, the active part starts about here, so it's well away from everything. It's, it's not a bad install. There's no reason why it should have fail-safed at one kilometre, unless the 433 noise level outside is greater than it is here in the workshop. Let's go and check that out. Okay, here we are. We're outside now, just looking at the noise profile, you see. It's still, the gain is still wound right up. And it's really only a couple of little peaks here that vary to and fro. And any decent system, excuse the strobing because the backlight on this seems to be flesh at a funny frequency. Yeah, any kind of um, good hopping system should be able to dodge those peaks. But I guess they are there. And um, I'll do some measurements of, uh, I'm holding this with one hand at the moment, holding the camera with the other. So I'll do some level measurements. Okay, that's about minus 90 to minus 94 decibels, that big peak we've got there. Which is, yeah, that's adequate. That's, I mean, you should be able to eat through that one kilometre. There should be plenty of range, um, even with that peak in the noise. So, yeah, don't know what's going on there. So there we go, that's the r C system. No, what I would, I would call no major noise issues with the installation. Looks good. And a bit of noise in the environment, but not a lot exactly here where I bound the system up. So the, why isn't it not working? Why are we only getting one kilometre of range out of what sh a system that should give, you know, tens of kilometres of range? And some people do get quite a long range out of these things. Well, several options, as I mentioned at the start of this video, could be the installation, but it's not. The installation is just fine. The other thing, it could be that wonky transmitter aerial, that horrible telescopic thing, because the module does get hot. And if the module's getting hot, that means a fair amount of the energy that should be going out the transmitter antenna is coming back into the module and causing things to heat up. So I have a Nagoya antenna coming, should be here in the next couple of days, just like the one on my spectrum analyzer. And I'll fit that and we'll do some more trying. But of course, when you know that it's very likely the model is going to fly out of range, it's a bit dodgy. And I, so what I've done is I'll put the system in my Hobby King EPP FPV with the FY21 and return to launch. So if it does fly out of range, hopefully it'll just turn around, come back. That's what it usually does. So that's something that I'll do um, when the weather allows, probably early next week. We'll do a test with the new transmitter antenna and 
an installation in the Hobby King EPP model, where again the installation is very good, everything's well away from everything else, even more so than on the AXN. But we'll try it out with that. See how we go. And uh, what is it, Dragon Link? have said they're sending me a Dragon Link to review. So it'll be interesting to see the comparison. Of course, the other thing you've got to remember with that uh, the R mile C system is that it is spitting out a lot of energy in harmonics. So even though it's supposedly 1.2 watts in the low power configuration, how much of that's actually on the frequencies you want and how much of it is harmonic energy? If you put it on a power meter, it's going to measure the whole lot. It may be that the actual amount of power going to the antenna is a lot less than the 1.2 watts. Uh, that it claims, at least the amount of power going to the antenna on the required frequency. So there we go. And of course, the last thing I could do is take a hike a kilometre over to where that half round barn is and just measure the noise profile over there. They don't pay me enough to do that, but hey, I may do it. I may just jump the fence, take the spectrum analyzer and just see how much noise. Maybe there's something in that barn over there on the sheds nearby that's creating a lot of noise, which is causing the RMLC receiver to be swamped and lose the transmitter signal. Who knows? But I'll do my best to find out for you. And if the people from RMLC are watching, maybe they could chime in and tell us what they think the problem is. There probably will be a further instalment in the RMLC system when I've checked out all these other options. And when I fly the Hobby King EPP model with the uh, Nagoya antenna on the transmitter. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you like it. Comments on the bottom, questions on the bottom. See you again very soon on RC Model Reviews.